amazing about that song is if you know the scripture reference, it has a profound meaning. And that's why it's important always to be in the Word. This morning we'll, we will read Psalm 126 responsibly. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. We store our fortune to the Lord, like streams in the air. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can I have the readers come forward, please? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for, the foremo shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside the streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Today's epistle is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 7, beginning at the 23rd verse. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who are weak, but the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise with the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 46th verse. Glory be to you, o Lord. Then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and, call, and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. 
The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. And as indicated in the bulletin, at this time I'd like to invite all our children up to the front for our object lesson. Let me get my bag. Any others? Oh, well. Well, children. <laughs> But you can hear me fine, I'm sure. Okay. How's everybody doing today? Okay. Doing fine? Having a good day so far? Yeah? And you brought mom and dad with you? Good? Okay. I've got something in here that I don't see any of you wearing, but it is something that you wear. Yes? What do you think, Sophie? A hat. A hat. No, not a hat. That's a good guess, because nobody's wearing a hat either, right? Okay, go ahead. Number two. Gloves? No, nobody's wearing gloves, are they? Okay, Skyla? Sunglasses? Well, not sunglasses. But hey... Good guess. I did bring glasses. How about that, huh? That was good. All right, only took uh, three three guesses. I know. Uh, I know. Abigail was going to guess glasses too, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, and oh yeah. Yeah. Where's Keith today? Where's our candy man? Uh, oh, no. huh? Soccer. Okay. Well, I know he'd be here otherwise. For sure. Yep. So, but I, I don't have candy. I've been asked and I have agreed that maybe it's a little bit distracting going into Sunday school eating candy. Uh, it takes a little while to get into the lesson. So, I agreed I'm going to give candy to the teachers that they can give out in Sunday school. And, and excuse me? And, and next Sunday, next Sunday's Halloween. It's also Reformation, by the way. <laughs> we Lutherans kind of pride ourselves on the 31st being Reformation. But it is Halloween, too. Okay. And we do give out candy as well. Glasses, though. Hey, glasses. Uh, do any of you wear glasses at all? You do? Okay. Uh, you got them at home? Yeah, okay. Um, I don't normally wear glasses, but I just picked these up the other day um, because sometimes I was happened to be in the uh, pharmacy where you uh, get pills and things like that that you need sometimes when you're sick. And yeah, that's right, exactly. Abigail knows. Try to read the little words on those bottles, right? I think uh, adults know that even better than the kids, but uh, you're right. Trying to read, read some of those little words, so I thought they had some reading glasses there. Let me see. Oh, wow, that works. You know? So I thought, well, wasn't much. I picked them up, and uh, I use them occasionally at home just for reading the little words that are on those bottles. Sometimes that's not good enough, right? What else? What else? I got something else in the bag. Not candy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Skyler. No candy today. What do you think, uh, Sophie? What do you think might be in the bag yet? Besides glasses. A book? No. No, but something else that can help you at times to see very small things. Ah. Hello there. I can see you do this. Yeah. What is that? 
I'll magnifying glass. Right. Do you know? Do you ever use a magnifying glass to see little things? Yeah. He, he has one, Grandpa. I have one of my grandma. You have one at your grandma's house? Yeah, yeah. He's got one with a light on top. All right. Wow. Getting real fancy here. Well, sometimes you need something to see things that are really small because our eyes don't do it on their own. And, uh, well, what does this have to do? The bottom line is, what does this have to do with Jesus, right? What does this have to do with Jesus? Well, the man came to Jesus one day who couldn't see at all. He couldn't, even with glasses or a magnifying glass, wasn't going to work because he was blind and he couldn't see. His eyes didn't work at all. Do you ever know anybody like that that uh, couldn't see at all? They were blind. Um, well, there are people who, who are like that in this world, can't see, need a lot of help. This man needed help. And Jesus asked him, what do you, what do you want? What do you want? What would you like me to do for you? And he simply said, that I may see. That I could see where I'm going. See people, see things, see. And your grandpa has to, uh-huh. Well, that's it. Sometimes we only need glass. This man needed a lot more help. And Jesus healed him. He gave him sight. He performed a miracle. That doesn't uh, usually happen just like that in our world today, but God has all kinds of power. And even uh, doctors are learning more and more about eyes, no less the rest of the body, that uh, all kinds of uh, miracles are being performed in the medical field. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to let her preach the sermon. <laughs> that was, I'm sure that was a little scary. Sounds scary to me. Well, Jesus healed a person who couldn't see. Because he has all kinds of power. And he has healed us from sin, from all the things that cause us harm and that um, we do that, that are not good. And Jesus came and he died on the cross, right? And then he got up from the dead to show us that nothing can separate us from his love. He cares for us so much, he's always with us. And just like he healed this person, he gives us healing power at times too. Did you ever cut your finger? Did you ever get a little cut or something? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to put a Band-Aid on it, right? And then it heals. That. Okay. And this is why God gave you two ears. <laughs> Okay. You're yeah. speaking in tongues. Out of here, speaking in tongues. <laughs> yes. Well, we need to just remember that Jesus is the one who has all kinds of power to help us in every need, even like He healed the blind man and gave him sight. Okay. Yeah. All right. And with that, why don't we just bow our heads, take a moment to pray? Okay. Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for healing us. From all that could hurt us. From all that could hurt us. Thank you. For thank you. Thank you for being our savior. Thank you for being our savior. Giving us the eyes of faith. Giving us the eyes of faith. To believe in you. To believe in you. Help us to follow you. Help us follow you. And to tell others about you. And to tell others about you. That we may every day. Every day, every day. Thank and praise your name. Thank and praise your name. Amen. 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 Okay. And thank you all for coming. Great to see you today. Thanks for the extra sermon. <laughs> we all appreciate that. And you guys have a great day in Sunday school, and we'll see you a little later, okay? Be careful.
Okay, sermon number two. <laughs> the text I've chosen to uh, meditate on with you today, reflect on, is from the gospel lesson read a moment ago, uh, the 10th chapter of Mark, verses 51 and 52. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Um, thinking about the blessing we have to be thankful for. We're getting closer to Thanksgiving, and it is a time of giving thanks to God, to God for the blessings that he has given us um, as a nation, as a, as a family, as a church. Um, many blessings that uh, we can't even count. I almost said, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. You know, see, it just comes natural. That's the way it, that's the way it is. For God's people, when we know the goodness of God, we just uh, want to thank and praise him all the time. We want to follow him. We want to serve him. That's what, that's what our text is about, following the Lord, uh, following the Lord. Um, I, I was asked also, uh, before I forget, <laughs> I was given a, a paper that you all received, I think it was in the bulletin a couple of weeks ago when I was not here, or maybe I was, I don't know, I don't remember, but I, I've seen this, and uh, let me just invite you to, um, if you don't have one, I think there are more around, it's a time talent uh, survey, um, actually, at the point of the, the survey, it's really an invitation to find out a, invite God's people to get involved in different things that are going on in the church without uh, feeling that you're making a lifelong commitment to something here. Um, some of you have interests in some of these, uh, you have expertise, skills in some of the different areas of ministry. These are areas of ministry that the church carries on in, in many ways. And there are boards and organizations that uh, do all of these things and are always looking for help. Um, that's the point. The church is always looking for help, and it would be a help to know if somebody is uh, interested in either learning or maybe has the talent of playing some instrument. Um, and if you do, you would like to uh, maybe sing or play an instrument with one of the uh, praise teams. Uh, check that, put your name there, and uh, that would get passed on that you could get invited to help out or, uh, you know, directed in some way there. Uh, same thing with all of these. Uh, areas of need, uh, gardening and landscaping. Uh, gardening especially at this point, the only one I know who does the gardening around here is Mary, right? Uh, there may be some others. If you do that, that's fine. Um, we'd like to have everybody check off uh, what you may be interested in, what you're skilled at, what you're doing, and we're keeping a file. The Stewardship Board is keeping a file. I encouraged this a while ago, that if they had a file of names of people who like to do certain things or can do certain things, then you may get a call from somebody, hey, we've got a broken window in the back and we need somebody to help replace a window. And you know how to do that kind of work, that's great. Would you like to come down Saturday, we're meeting here at 10 o'clock, whatever. You know, that's just a for instance. If you could take a look at this, fill it out, and uh, we'll pass them along to the people who do those kind of things and may need your help. Okay. Where are they gonna get that from? Uh, where are they going to get this from, Bill? In the, on the table in the Norfex. There are some. They, I believe they were putting a bullet in a couple weeks ago. Okay. Um, they're on the table in the Norfex. 
it's a, simply a time talent survey uh, asking for help if we need help in certain areas. Or what would you like to do? If you'd like to do something along these lines, great. Especially fill it out and we'll um, plug it in. Okay. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Bartimaeus, what about that guy? Blind guy. Blind guy. Needed some help. Knew only the Lord could help him. Interesting that that um, that Jesus told him his faith has healed him. What faith? What faith? Well, obviously he had some faith in Jesus when he called him son of David. Son of David. He knew that the promised Messiah, the one to come, would be the son of David. He had some knowledge of the Messiah, the promise, looking forward as all of Israel was looking forward to the fulfillment of that promise. He proclaimed Jesus, the son of David. He was looking for help. He knew Jesus could help him. The people didn't want him to, to keep crying out. They, they wanted to hear what Jesus had to say, <laughs> right? And, uh, and, and they were probably looking for a miracle too. Um, little did they realize Jesus was going to perform a miracle uh, with this man that they were trying to shut down and, and shut up and tell him, stop. We want to hear Jesus, see what he's up to. Well, what he's up to is call, call that man. Get him over here. And Jesus, of course, healed him. Gave him his sight. Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Immediately. Oh, that's right. This is the Gospel of Mark. <laughs> Uthis. Uthis. Right. Immediately. I've said this before. Those of you who've heard me before. No, I pointed out Mark uses that word, uthis, immediately to indicate a miracle is about to happen or has happened. It's always tied into a miracle. A miracle did happen. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Um, another Greek term here that you might be interested in, hadas. Hadas. Here, hado, along the road, the way, the path. It may be a general term at times, simply referring to the road. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. This man, having experienced the power and the presence of God, having been healed and given sight, he was moved as you and I have been moved to follow Jesus. He knew the goodness of God. He asked for help. God heard him and healed him. And he had to follow Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. Going to Jerusalem. That's where they were headed. Hadas, the road. Also a word that means something else that I'm sure you're familiar with. It's called the way. The way. We have Bibles. I believe I have one in the, in the office here that is entitled The Way, right? It's a youth Bible um, and has all kinds of uh, footnotes and cross-references. The Way. The Way, as some of you may know, was also a technical term, not just referring to a dusty, dirty road, but referring to the Christian life, the way of Christ, following the one who is the way. Uh, in Acts, Paul speaks about uh, the way. He went to the high priest and desired letters of him in case he found any of the way that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Hadas, the way. Jesus 
taught the way. He was the way, right? What did he say? I am the way, the truth and the life. Interestingly enough, same word, hadas, the way. Uh, later on, Paul says in Acts 24, I had, he said, I confess to you that after the way, which they call heresy, and Paul was converted to the way, he said, after the way which they call heresy, so I worship. I worship the way, the Christian way, the way of Christ. Bartimaeus followed Jesus not just on the road, but he followed him on the way. God's people follow Jesus because he is the way, the truth, the life. We're here worshiping him who is the way. And by his grace, he has given us his spirit through his word and sacrament to believe, to have the eyes of faith and to see him and to know him as our Lord, our Savior, and our King. We're moved to follow him on the way. But that can be a problem at times, right? We live in a world that is too much with us at times. And we're distracted by so many things. And we get off the right path. And people get wrapped up in all kinds of uh, hedonistic pleasure of, pleasures of life. And they get wrapped up into uh, drugs and drinking and uh, sexual activity that is far from being the way. And we need to hear from the one who is the way, the truth, the life. Sometimes we think we're going the right way. Uh, we need to check out uh, the, uh, the direction we're going at times against God's word by his spirit. Kind of reminds me of uh, oh, a short story of, uh, of my wife and I when we were <laughs> living in Flint, Michigan on my internship, my vicarage year. And uh, we had started a, a young adults group at uh, Timothy Lutheran Church in South uh, uh, St. Louis. Uh, I worked there uh, for the two years that I was uh, at the seminary, and then the third year, fourth year when I came back, they actually uh, paid to have me assist in ministry there, even though I was not a pastor yet. I was still a seminarian, but they helped me, I helped them, did hospital calls, shut in, all kinds of ministries there, preaching. Um, at any rate, we went back for a, a Christmas Eve uh, fellowship with the young adults, and we were on our way thinking it was the way, traveling from Flint down to St. Louis. We were traveling across Michigan uh, using uh, the old-fashioned uh, form of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a map, we had a map, one of those big atlases, yeah. Uh, we didn't have GPS in those days, um, but I had a, a faithful uh, leader here with me and she was directing me, so I was on the right path. I knew I was, and I was. We were heading to Lansing, where then you go south, uh, and head south to St. Louis. Everything was fine, making great time. She fell asleep. <laughs> I kept going. I was driving. I kept going. <laughs> Uh, she woke up, I, uh, said, she said, how are we doing? I said, we're making great time. Uh, we're almost to Grand Rapids. She uh, laughed. She laughed. She said, Grand Rapids? You're almost, we're almost to Grand Rapids? <laughs> She's, I said, yeah, we're doing great. She said, you should have turned a long time ago. You went through, we went through Lansing. We were supposed to go south. And I looked, I thought, oh yeah, we're not on Interstate 69 anymore, are we? Oh, I thought, I thought we were making good time. We were, we were actually about an hour and a half out of our way. I had to turn around, she says, you gotta turn around and go back. Oh my goodness. 
and I thought I was doing so well. I was on the right path, making great time, way out of the way. Sometimes that can happen in life. You know, we think we're doing great, only we got to check it out with what does God's Word have to say about this, and uh, find out. That's why, that's why the uh, youth in our confirmation class get the Ten Commandments, because that, that tells us God's way. It's simple enough, there's only ten in Jesus' day. How many were there in Jesus' day? 613? Yeah, there were quite a few more, because they believed that if ten were good, well, more is better, right? More is better. So they added it, and they had all of these laws and rules and regulations, and you know some of them, because Jesus was accused of, you know, healing on the Sabbath, uh, doing all kinds of things that he shouldn't have been doing on the Sabbath, and not washing his hands properly. Okay, so they had all kinds of things. Well, the world is too much with us. We've, we have many obstacles, and we live in a world where there's evil and violence and, and all kinds of issues, people filled with, with selfishness and sinful pride, and, and they don't care about anything or anyone. And it's, it's hard to follow the one who is the way when you're going that way. God's people know better. And that's why we're here today, worshiping the one who is the way, and through word and sacrament, getting the power of his spirit as he calls us in faith to follow him. And by his spirit, by his grace, we're here worshiping, praising the Lord, and we go home today, <laughs> dare I say, as we're getting closer to Christmas, and the wise men visited Jesus, they went home, at, we go home like they did, another way. Yeah. They went home another way, right? They, went, they took a different route because Herod wanted to kill the infant Jesus, and if they went that way, there was going to be some trouble. And so, being warned by God in a dream, they went home another way. And that's the way we go home. We go home from here. I say to people all the time, you come to grace because no one goes home sad. We go home happy. We go home forgiven. We go home with the power and the love of Christ in our hearts. We go home anxious to tell others of the great things God has done. We go home following the way. May this be the faith we ever have in him. That faithfully following him, we may also tell others about the way. The one who is the way, the truth, the life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now, we'll take an offering.
rise for prayer. <clears throat> Hear our cries and be attentive to the voice of our pleas, O Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David. Confident that for the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, our God will hear our cries and be attentive to the voice of our pleas. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather in your name, we ask your gracious guidance and provision for your people at True Life Lutheran Church in New York. Strengthen the bond of unity within this church as they seek your will and direction for the future. We also pray that you would provide for their needs as they recover from damage to their church building as a result of Hurricane Ida. We know that you are in control of all circumstances in our lives. Fill us with a sense of gratitude, even when the way seems difficult. Your grace is sufficient for all our needs. All glory, honor, and praise be to you, O God. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, thank you for providing us with a high priest who serves with purity and perfection, for preachers and laborers of God's harvest, sent to gather his elect from the farthest points of the earth, for pastors and missionaries, that he will sustain them faithful in their calling and for our schools and teachers, our congregations and their servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O Lord, you have appointed us as priests in your kingdom, not to offer dead works out of our own weakness, but to offer praise and prayers and living sacrifices made holy, innocent, and unstained by the once for all service of Christ, our high priest, Make every Christian household constant in prayer and good works, since our Savior always lives to make intercession for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Strike down the haughty, O Lord of hosts, in every hostile voice that would rebuke the voice of faith with its cries and prayers. Uphold the protection of our nation and its leaders in honest service for the good of the people, especially that the gospel may be preached and heard without hindrance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O Lord, save your people and be a father to your Israel, the holy Christian church. Give courage to the hearts of all who cry to you for mercy, those in our prayer folder and those we name in our hearts. Give them steadfast faith and be pleased to grant them recovery that they may follow you now and into everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Give eyes of faith to all who commune this day that believing Christ promises in his testament they would discern the true body and blood distributed here in the sacrament and so taste and see that he is good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, your mercy will not leave us. Ever will your truth abide. Then in you we will confide. So into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who in heaven and earth. I said I will confess my sins unto the Lord. And you forgave me for my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, Confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I 
am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray for your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Our Lord Jesus. You may be seated.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thank you. 
Sorry you're not here, but uh, get a feeling of what's going on today, right? Yeah, what a beautiful day. A little chilly. We even put the heat on. All right. Uh, well, hopefully we'll see you soon, okay? I'm going to let you listen to the rest of the conversation. It sounds like a subway station or something, right? Except there's no street.